Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I've never told this to anyone, but I was in love with my best friend from church, and today he got married to a girl. I was one of his groomsmen, and as I stood a few feet away from him as he said his vows, I couldn't help but feel so confused. Don't get me wrong, I was happy for him, but I wasn't only happy. There were other thoughts, other feelings, perhaps jealousy? Was I jealous of his now wife? Was I jealous of his childhood friend who, instead of me, got the honor of best man? Was I, still, in love with him? Today, I'm going to tell you a story I intended to take to the grave. A story of how an inquisitive, kind young man in church became my close friend, and soon, the object of my highest unrequited love and affection. First off, let's call him Nathan. I had always known Nathan, but we were not close as kids. He attended a different branch location of the same church, and we only saw each other during regional Bible camps while growing up. He was one of the quote-unquote bad kids who didn't take Bible study seriously and had a low-key gangster vibe. I, on the other hand, though talkative, was at least diligent in doing our assignments at the camp. He was athletic and played basketball, and I was more of an academic indoors kid. But in our first year of college, a couple of us had a spiritual awakening at Bible camp. We were inspired by the preachers and wanted to pursue understanding the Bible in depth and live the Christian life. As I was the more talkative, brainy kid, Nathan would often ask for my opinions and interpretations on certain questions about God and Christianity. Like, if God is so loving, why would he send people to hell? Or, what is the purpose of creating humans if God knew they would sin? We debate different points and views with each other, often to understand various sides. But we both had a lot of fun just discussing and debating in itself. When others listened in, they think we were arguing because it often got heated. But that's when we were having the most fun. We were on the same wavelength. During college, we studied on different coasts. He was majoring in computer science on the west coast, and I was studying econ on the east coast. But every night, he'd message me on Gchat, when that used to be a thing. He'd ask how my day went, and then go on and on about all the fun things he did or weird ideas he had, every night. I looked forward to getting his Gchat messages when he got home, which was often midnight for him and 3am for me. And on days when I was feeling down, him chatting about his day with such excitement would almost instantly make me happy. He was easily my best friend. But he wasn't just someone I enjoyed chatting with. He was someone I could trust. At the time, I just admitted to myself that I was gay. I struggled with the inner pain and conflict of seeing homosexual lust as sin, but not being able to control my strong urges. I didn't come out to him, but I told him about my quote-unquote struggle with lust, and he sincerely wanted to help me and even went out of his way to do so. He tried to keep me accountable and make me tell him when I slipped up. And he never told a soul about any of this. He has kept every single secret of mine to this day, even from his now wife. During my summer break, I'd be back in California, and since I didn't have a car yet, he'd drive 50 minutes to come pick me up to hang out or grab a meal. He was proactively kind and generous, and he cared about our friendship. I'd be too shy to ask him for anything, but he'd insist repeatedly on things like coming all the way to my house to pick me up. After I graduated, I got a job that was 10 minutes from his school. He had another year of college left, and I started having lunch with him on the weekdays while also going to his campus Bible studies. This is when I started to develop physical attraction toward him, perhaps because of proximity. But the truth is, the foundation of my attraction was not physical. We connected first and foremost on a mental and emotional level. We debated ideas and thoughts. We shared our deepest feelings and secrets. We trusted each other. And that's why I... loved him. I remember one time, after Bible study at his apartment, my car wouldn't start. It was raining outside, very lightly, and when he found out, he came out immediately and popped open the hood of my car to take a look. I felt bad, especially because it was raining and getting late. But that's how he always was, trying to help me come up with solutions and see them through with me. In this incident, he confirmed that I needed to jumpstart my car, so he got his cables and had my car running again. That's just one of the many times he saved me, and without me asking. He'd see my problems and he'd come to help, literally through rain or shine. People eventually started to notice how close I was to him. His younger sister even joked that I was his quote-unquote boyfriend. I'd go to his place to hang out on the weekends, and I was always tagging along in group settings. 
A while after he graduated, he was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. It was devastating news, and he tried to downplay it so that people around him wouldn't react so dramatically. But I was seriously mortified. Such a good person, who I finally got to be close to, now had cancer. And I might lose him. Forever. During his surgery, I visited him in the hospital. It was a heavy atmosphere as his parents were weighed down with worry, and Nathan felt bad for bringing that worry upon them. One of his cousins also came to visit, and seeing me there for Nathan, she told me, You're such a good friend. It felt good to hear that, but the truth was, Nathan was an even better friend to me, and the kindness he showed me is nowhere near what I could do for him. I didn't tell her that, but it was something I just knew was true. Nathan eventually went through several rounds of chemotherapy. During the treatment, I'd go to his house to visit, chat, and play board games. He'd get tired easily, so I'd always be careful not to overstay or exhaust him. For the first time, I saw him get a bit depressed, lose his spirit, and become impatient. He always saw himself as a strong, healthy person ready to help others in need, and now, he was saying things like, It wouldn't matter if I died anyway. It hurt me to hear those things, but I tried my best to be there for him. What really hurt our friendship, though, was my jealousy. I'd get jealous when he'd hang out with other friends without inviting me or telling me about it. In a way, I was a crazy, controlling boyfriend. But I wasn't even his boyfriend. I guess I just got too emotionally attached. To me, I was happy just living this way with him forever. Being his close friend, at his side. We didn't need to date. We didn't need to be more than close friends. But the closer I got, the more I felt he began to take me for granted. He didn't seem to appreciate me as much as before, and we'd get into arguments over petty things. It was honestly like a couple fighting, as others would observe. But as the saying goes, distance makes the heart grow fonder. And perhaps that's what we didn't have enough of. Distance. A few years after he was officially cancer-free, thank God, we went on a trip to Seattle with a few other friends. And that's when things exploded. We had verbal arguments and cold wars throughout the whole vacation. After one extremely trivial but very loud fight, we stopped talking that entire trip. I felt bad for our other friends who had to witness this, but it was my jealousy and resentment from feeling taken for granted that eventually led to this explosion. And I couldn't just tell him that I was jealous because I loved him. I wasn't even out to him yet. So I bottled up until things got out of hand. Months after the fight, we still didn't talk to each other. It sucked, but I felt like it gave us each the opportunity to think. For me, I accepted the fact that I could never date him. He was straight and against homosexual behavior by virtue of our religion. And I was gay. I also realized that perhaps it was time I thought about dating a guy. I couldn't live like this forever. After four months, Nathan reached out and invited me to dinner. I accepted. He took me to a nice Cajun restaurant for a fancy meal and drinks, and he apologized for what happened. He apologized. It was heart-wrenching to see how good of a person he still was. I was the one who was unfairly jealous. I was the one picking fights. Sure, he took me for granted once in a while, but I honestly believe he didn't do it on purpose. Yet, here he was, earnestly and honestly trying to heal our relationship. I happily accepted. And I don't remember if I apologized, but I am so sorry I didn't try to resolve our problems in a better way sooner. After that dinner, we continued to be good friends, but we were never as close as we were before. Perhaps that was for the better. It gave him some space to start dating, and now he's found a beautiful woman to be his wife. He's happy. He's healthy. And that's all I could really ask for. For someone I love so dearly. Perhaps the only person in this world I'd be willing to take a bullet for without hesitation. And he's not only someone I'm willing to die for, he's someone I'm willing to live for. To be the one who carries him through dark times. The one who supports him when he's weak or stressed. And the one who will unconditionally love him. But he can't accept me to be that person. And I've accepted that fact. Maybe one day I'll tell him the depths of why and how much I care for him. Maybe I won't, but I still see myself as an incredibly lucky person to have had and still have Nathan in my life. And you know what? Yes, I am still in love with him. 
And yes, I am madly jealous of his wife and his best man. But I also appreciate them because they make him happy. And that... That is enough for me. Well, if you've made it this far, thanks for listening to me go on and on about my unrequited hopeless love. But what about you? Have you ever lived through an experience like this? Have you ever confessed your feelings to a straight person? If so, how did it go? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your stories. And lastly, it would mean so much to me if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day!